Grand Theft Auto V, released on September 17th, 2013, immediately became a global phenomenon. is isn't just one of the biggest games of all time, but one of the biggest pieces of entertainment media of all time. Since its inception, Grand Theft Auto V has sold nearly 200 million copies and amassed over $8 billion in sales revenue. This game is huge, it was only made bigger by the wildly successful GT Online, which acted as an infinite money glitch for Rockstar. But I want to put some emphasis on the story mode for this video. You see, Grand Theft Auto V has been out for over 10 years, and I really wanted to make a video about that. I didn't want to do a long retrospective, at least not about this game. I wanted to do something different. There are already tons of retrospectives and videos about GTA V talking about what's great about it, how they learned to hate it, even useless information about the game, which is surprisingly profound and insightful. Definitely go check that one out. So, with GTA V being over 10 years old now, what video was I to make? Initially, it was going to be an hour-long critique, but I think my imposter syndrome ruined that video. And then I thought about doing three separate videos based around the game's three protagonists, but that kind of fell through too, and still kind of could happen in the future. Instead, I wanted to talk about the development of GTA V, the end product, and how it differs from past games in the series, all to support my point that GTA V was just a very expensive experiment. When I say experiment, I don't say this to mean that I think GTA V wasn't complete from its initial release. It's a hugely packed game with tons of content, excluding the online, and the game is extremely well polished, especially for a game that was initially released in 2013 and spanning three whole console generations. But how big it is doesn't necessarily equate to overall quality. Let's take a look at previous Grand Theft Auto games, like San Andreas. It contained a multitude of RPG-like activities such as the ability to eat and gain weight, allowing you to physically change your character. You could go to the gym and turn your specific body type into muscle. There was a dating system where you can get a girlfriend and go on dates. This game came out in 2004, by the way. Or, let's look at GTA 4 and the activities to which you can perform in this game. The ability to enter every restaurant and club available, the ability to hang on to ledges, realistic NPC interactions, especially with cops, the return of dating system, and of course, bowling. Nico, it's Roman. Let's go bowling. But with the transition to GTA 5, there was so much content left on the cutting room floor. Places like Burger Shot and Cluck and Bell exist in Los Santos, but we can't interact with them. I can understand not having the different weight systems between all three characters, but maybe change its purpose, like increase health or added buffs. Or nightclubs and bars like Bahama Mamas, which have fully designed interiors which could only mean at one point they were accessible. Even with the game being filled with content, it's obvious that there were so many more activities meant to be played. You can find assets for basketball, air hockey, and ping pong, all of which aren't available in the final product. I think that more resources were dedicated to this game supporting three main protagonists. For those of you who don't know, Rockstar toyed with the idea of multiple protagonists as early as San Andreas, but was limited by the hardware at the time. And the idea for multiple protagonists resurfaced with Grand Theft Auto 4. Nico Bellic for the base game, Johnny Clevitz for The Lost and Damned, and Luis Lopez for The Ballad of Gay Tony. So GTA 5 having three protagonists at the same time seemed like the next big leap for the guys over at Rockstar. Only difference is, the effect wears off after about the first playthrough. I remember having a long conversation about this game with my friend, and he said that Michael and Trevor feel like characters we should be taking missions from, because Franklin seems like the most level-headed and believable protagonist of the game. As opposed to characters like Nico, whose story directly rivals that of a Michael or a Trevor, an immigrant who struggles to become accustomed to the Liberty City way of life. Three characters was cool, still is, but I think they've made a great choice knocking it down to two for the next game. Full disclosure, this video wasn't me hating on Grand Theft Auto V. It's one of my favorite games ever, but in hindsight, in retrospect, it's kind of a necessary evil. Rockstar uses the fifth main entry in the series as a testing ground, straying away from series staples like closed off parts of the map tied to story progression advanced mechanics like parkour, and overall quality of life things like different fighting techniques, and still managed to make the best selling game in history. And I can't wait until they do it again. 
This video is kind of a spiritual successor to a video I saw a few days ago by Captain Gleick uh, called GTA 5 feels like a downgrade. Um, I mentioned some other videos that will also be referenced down in the description earlier. Um, and that kind of inspired me to make this video because GTA 5 is still great and GTA 6 is coming out so. But I've had this talking point for a while and wanted to make a video about it because a lot of people in my real life wouldn't agree with me but i want to see what you guys think i read all the comments uh and i appreciate all the support you guys have been giving me in the channel the past few weeks and i really hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you guys think down in the comment below i'll talk to you guys in the next one peace